Welcome to Design Your Destiny, your podcast for tapping into the power of your subconscious mind. In this next few minutes, allow me to show you how to tap into that power so that you can create success with ease, form deeper connections, and have greater presence in your relationships, and most importantly, find peace within yourself. My name is Penny Chason, and I'm your host. Hey, I'm back with another episode on relationships, diving into a reciprocity in relationships and boundaries. So I really dug kind of deep in the last episode. This one is going to be much shorter. So I left you with a teaser at the end about reciprocity being about showing up 100% in your relationship. Now, I am one of those people who's guilty of talking about showing up 50-50, right? My husband and I are 50-50. And it seemed like at the time, people would just be shocked that it was 50-50, right? He carried on a lot of the role that traditionally would be a housewife. I took the more masculine role, having the career, highest wage earner, that type of thing when I was in anesthesia. And we had our reasons for that. But most importantly, I just didn't enjoy dealing with all the school stuff. He liked to go to the school. He liked to participate in meetings and do all those things. And for me, I really, um, I was interested in my children and that they were having a good experience at school, but I just wasn't up for all of the other stuff. And people would be shocked by that. And would be like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're 50-50. We just divide up the roles in the way that they feel good. What I didn't realize is that what we were doing was we were actually both showing up 100% in the areas that we excelled at best in the relationship and for each other. Now, does this mean we have a perfect relationship? Oh, God, absolutely not. Like, just like anybody else, you know. I mean, if you communicate and you have differing interests, there are going to be times when you disagree. It's how you handle these things that matters. But sometimes people are struggling in relationships and they want to improve the relationship. The partner doesn't want to talk about it or maybe the partner doesn't realize there's a problem. And they come to an impasse and it's like, what do I do here? How do I handle this? And here's the way that you handle it. If you can identify what the other person's love languages are, because unfortunately, through media, whether it's movies, TV, music, it seems like we've gone through a phase in this country where It seems like it was almost popularized that, well, if you're not giving me what I need, I'm not giving you what you need either. And some of that goes to, you know, the way we witnessed our parents handle things and the things that we learned going through life. Sometimes we just simply don't know how to handle a situation and when our needs aren't being met. And when our needs aren't being met, if we continue to show up, it feels quite vulnerable, right? And nobody wants to get hurt. But it seems like it was almost a pop culture thing for a while. And I'm not very much into pop culture anymore. So it still might be a thing that, you know, well, if you're not going to be good to me, I'm not going to be good to you. And people just really dig in. So what do you do if you're in this situation? Well, if you can identify their love languages and you really care about them and you really love them and you want that relationship to work, you show up 100%. You show up 100% consistently and they are going to see it. Now, depending on how long things have been going on, they may doubt that the change is something that's going to last. It's going to depend on your history, your experiences, your past experiences, their past experiences. So there has to be some compassion and objectivity here. But you show up 100%. 
most of the time, if you show up 100% with another person, they're going to recognize that and they're going to change. If they don't change, then you get to decide how long it is that you are available to continue in a relationship where needs are not being met. And you are the only person who can make that decision. But if this person is really, um, if there are behaviors and circumstances that are happening that are unhealthy and they impact you negatively, like maybe yelling, screaming, maybe there's alcohol involved, shopping too much, working too much, never being available. I mean, there, there are tons of ways that people cope with their own inner issues. And it doesn't have to be alcohol and drugs. Those are the things that people always think about, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be food. It can be becoming a workaholic. It could be becoming a shopaholic, right? There are some people withdraw. You get to decide what it is that you're available for, and you get to set that boundary. When it comes to boundaries, boundaries are not about the other person either doing or not doing something because of how it makes you feel. A boundary is about how you respond when that person is engaging in the behavior that you are not available for. Your boundary has nothing to do with them And it has everything to do with your response to the situation. So, for example, if you have a partner who every time they get stressed out, they have a temper, they don't know how to deal with their anger, and they're short and irritable and they yell and they scream, you absolutely have to tell them about the boundary. I am no longer available to be your sounding board when you are yelling and when you are screaming It makes me uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, and I don't like it. So, going forward, if you come in and you are in this space where you're yelling and you're screaming and you're irritable, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. I will not be available for it anymore. And then you are responsible for holding that boundary in terms of how you respond to their behavior. If you're in a situation where someone is abusing alcohol and you have children, you and you can say, you know what? If you come in from work, you've been drinking, you drove, you're intoxicated, I'm going to take the children and I'm going to leave for the night. Right? You get to choose what that looks like. And The boundary is about your response. And I'm a firm believer in boundaries. I mean, I have, you should have boundaries in all of your relationships. Boundaries are a healthy thing because, one, we're staying in integrity to ourselves and our own mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. But also, it shows others that we're not available to be mistreated or misused. And it gives them the opportunity to choose to change or obviously there's the reality that they could risk the fallout of what comes if they continue to repeat this behavior. And then that is another boundary that you get to choose to set at whatever time that it comes. So I promised that I was going to keep this one short for you. There is a lot to really ponder in these short few minutes uh, that we've kind of hung out here today. And I'm curious where you will take a look at your relationships and... See if there's room for you to show up more, different, 
Um, and it doesn't have to be your intimate relationships. It could even be within your work. It could be with your children, not necessarily your partner. It could be with your parents. And boundaries can be held with compassion. We can absolutely hold boundaries with compassion and understanding and without allowing ourselves to be walked all over because you are special. You are no one's doormat. And you deserve to be fulfilled in your life and enjoy it. Thank you for listening today. If you've enjoyed this episode of Design Your Destiny, I would appreciate it if you would head over to iTunes and leave a positive review. When you leave a positive review, it's like podcast currency, and we can increase our reach and get the message to even more people that they, just like you, have the ability to design their destiny. And remember, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform.